Okay, let's do an example of graphing a uh, trig function, in this case a sine function. Um, there are a few things we have to find. What we're basically going to graph this, if you remember from pre-calculus 1, you would often graph functions using transformations, and that's what's going to happen here. We, we know, hopefully, you know what the what a sine graph generally looks like and that we have the graph divided up into four parts I'm not to draw every point here, but this is pi and this is 2 pi and you have a graph that starts in the middle reaches its peak at 1 comes back down so I call these periodic graphs because they have this period over and over again. Um, so we're going to use transformations of this graph to make this graph. So uh, there's one tiny change I have to make to this first. Um, because you remember if a transformation is being made to x, it has to be made just to x. I have this 2x. Right, what I really need to have is x plus or minus something all by itself inside the parentheses. So for that reason, I can't have a 2x. So I'm, I'll fix that problem simply by factoring out a 2. So I'll have 3 sine 2 times the quantity x minus, and now I need pi over 2 divided by 2 because I'm factoring it out. So that's going to become pi over 4. Okay, and if I were to redistribute this, I'd have negative 2 pi over 4 or negative pi over 2. So now let's take a look at the elements, the various elements or parameters uh, that we have here. First of all, the, um, oh yeah, let's, okay, let's start with the amplitude. The amplitude is 3, and therefore, What's the range of this graph going to be? Well, you know, it's going to be plus or minus a, the amplitude. So the range is going to be from negative 3 to positive 3. Just like, you know, the range of a sine graph is negative 1 to positive 1. And what are we doing with this amplitude? This amplitude is a vertical stretch. Because I have a multiplying multiplying by a y value, multiplying the y by a value, and that value is on the outside, so it's being multiplied by y, it's a vertical stretch. Now, so that's going to have the effect, oops, have the effect of taking this graph, take turn the pen off here, here we go, that's going to have the effect of taking this graph and stretching it, this is going to be, this will essentially, this 1 will become 3, and this negative 1 will become negative 3. That's a, basically the effect that's going to have. Now, um, the next thing uh, we have to do is the period. I need to figure out if there's any stretching or shrinking going on here. And so remember, how do we get the period? Well, here's, uh, this is why we have to factor this 2 out. Right, the period is going to be 2 pi divided by... 2. It's 2 pi divided by this number. And so the period is going to be pi. Now, what's going to be the phase shift? Uh, well, the phase shift, again, what do we have here? We have a transformation, x minus pi over 4. So remember, this is a horizontal transformation. This is being, because you have an x minus pi over 4, inside the parentheses, that's going to mean a shift of pi over 4 to the right. right? Remember, anything that happens to x inside the parentheses, it's, it's x, it's opposite intuition. So you're going to have to, that's one I always tell my pre-calc 1 class, opposite intuition. So we're going to, the phase shift, uh, I'm going to put down as plus, not that you need a plus when indicating a positive number, but just just so it's obvious we're going to the right. So I'm, that's why I'm putting a plus. Now let's... We, we figured out the range here. Now, 
the domain of this function, well, the domain's going to be infinite. Uh, it's going to be all real numbers. Uh, so I can't write out the domain. It's going to be um, negative infinity to positive infinity. But what I want to do here is I want to figure out we have to graph one period. Obviously, we can't graph the whole function because it goes infinitely forever, uh, either side. So uh, um, I'm going to pick one period. Notice I haven't even graphed any points on this graph yet. I'm setting this thing up, and this is uh, the way I always prefer to graph thing, prefer to show these types of problems is to just transform key points and then just connect the dots. You look up here. Let's go back up here to our sine graph. If I were to graph this over here, and this, and this, and this, and this, those five points, I know from that point I could just kind of trace through those points, and that's what the sine graph looks like. So that's what I'm focused on here. Um, so one period, we already figured out that one period is going to go from zero to pi, and there's no reason why this ca I can't put negative pi to zero or negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. Um, the fact that I chose this interval, that's just arbitrary. I, I just picked 0 to pi, because um, that's just going to be the easiest to work with. But uh, this one period could be any period on that graph. I'm just choosing 0 pi, because I chose it. You could choose a different interval. You can choose, you know, negative pi over 3 to 2 pi over 3, although I wouldn't recommend that. Okay, but now, and, and also, this also, remember, this will also start out in the middle, right? I have a 0 here, and I have a pi over here, so that's, the, I, I choose this because this is one nice complete period. I'm not going to start out in the middle of a curve, or at the bottom, or the top. Sine graph, sine of 0 starts at 0, Starts in the middle of the range, and so 0 to pi is just the easiest thing to choose. That's why I chose it. Now, we have to make a little adjustment to this, because remember, um, we have a phase shift of pi over 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add pi over 4 to each of these numbers. Pi over 4, and this pi 4 pi over 4 plus pi over 4 and yeah, that is a hard looking pie but okay so this so just um to this another color here that's what i'm doing i'm taking this shift of pi over 4 and applying it here because we're moving everything pi over 4 to the right okay so now let's now that we have everything set up Let's go ahead and draw our graph. And again, I'm going to plot the five key points here. We're starting at, at, at pi over 4. Now, pi over 4, at, that's going to be the starting point. And this is why I chose the 0 pi period to start out with. Because I know at 0, well, I can plug in. I, I, I can plug in uh, 0 for x. Um, uh, you know, in a standard, in an untransformed graph, I'm going to get zero over here because at the at the first part of the sign, the sign graph opens up. I should say open up. At, 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 an untransformed sign graph is going to have a value of zero here. Now, after one quarter, it's going to reach its maximum. Oh, and actually, I shouldn't have drawn. Um, I shouldn't have drawn this at five pi over four. I mean, I should have drawn this at pi over four. That's gonna be a little difficult. I know this this graph didn't come out, grid didn't come out. So this is pi over two. So I'm gonna start with pi over four over here. At five pi over four, one, two, uh, yeah, one, two, three, four. Five pi over four. Uh, this is 4 pi over 4, this is 6 pi over 4, so I'm going to, 5 pi over 4 is right here. Okay, so I have the endpoints. Now, in the middle, what's in the middle? 3 pi over 4. Uh, 
so this is 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4 is over here. Yeah, this is not coming out so even. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to approximate these points because this grid didn't come out so well. So I'm just going to put it 3 pi over 4, I'm going to estimate it to be about here. It looks like about 3 quarters pi. All right. Now what happens after the first... And I'd, I'd recommend drawing something like this. Draw the basic pi sine graph or cosine graph at the beginning of the problem so you, you can see where this thing's going. Um, pi over 2 is one quarter of the way through. Now, we, again, we have an amplitude of 3. So I need to draw this not at, at, at 1, but at 3. There's no... Thankfully, there's n in this problem, there's no vertical shift, so this is still going to stay here. Um, at the three-quarter mark, that's going to be at pi, um, I'm going to graph negative three. So let's see what we have here. I've, I've taken these individual points and transformed them. Now, after that, I know what a sine graph looks like. It's going to come... Uh, this is going to be a bad drawing here. I, well, maybe not. It's going to come up to the midpoint here, and then it's going to come down. Yeah, It's a terrible graph, but you get, the, you get the idea. And I'm going to draw arrows here so we can see that the graph continues in each direction. Okay, so not a pretty looking graph, but you, you can tell that that's the idea. Uh, we took everything, basically we have a period from zero to pi, but we've taken everything and shifted it over by pi over... Oh, shouldn't have drawn that straight mark there. Um, we've taken everything from 0 to pi, let me turn my pen off, everything from 0 to pi, and we've shifted over by pi over 4 units, and of course, this 3, this amplitude of 3, means we have a vertical stretch. Um, okay, and that's basically how you graph a sine. I, I, I prefer to do it this way, to get everything set up, here's the range, I know where my y values are going to be, and I know that this pattern is going to be represented by pi over 4 to 5 pi over 4. So I have everything set up. All I need to do is plot my points. One, one quarter of the period, half the period, three quarters of the period, and, and the end period. And then all i got to do is just trace it. And I think that makes it a lot easier to, to grab. Okay, um, we're going to see one more example after this. Uh, I'll do one with a cosine and a, uh, and a vertical shift.